Hey gang, welcome back to Joe Daddy's Garage. I'm in the middle of a project right now, working on this 56 Chevy, and I did put a gasser front end on it, as I've shown in the other videos, but this video is more about what I need to do to reinforce my garage trusses. Now, you're not really supposed to be lifting from a truss. You should have some sort of a support beam or a cherry picker or something like that, but I don't have many options. I do have a cherry picker, but it's in the back of my garage and I'm kind of interested in using the air hoist. So what I'm concerned with is that engine weighs 750 pounds. That's what I've been told anyway, a big block Chevy. And you add in the bell housing, the transmission, various other you know pieces and parts, and that's a lot of weight to suspend from that, that truss setup up there. Now what I've done, I don't know if you can see it very well, I have added two by sixes across the V of the truss, and then I put two uh, two four by fours on top of that, and then the chain hoist is hooked to that uh, or over top of a chain that's over top of the four by fours. So I know that structurally, I'm pretty confident with how that is put together, but my concern is the bottom of these trusses because right now the weight is being carried by the top when I push down on it some of it's going on the truss a base most of it's coming from the top so what I want to do is support those two trusses and I have an idea and what I plan to do and just bear with me on this is I'm gonna make two I-beams so I'm gonna take a 2 by 4 I'm going to take a 2x3, put it inside of it, and then put another 2x4 on top and screw all that together. So I end up with basically an I-beam. Then what I want to do is take the, put this against the bottom of the two trusses. They're on a 2-foot uh, distance between them, so this is like 32 inches, plenty of length there. So I'll have the trusses underneath that. Then <laughs> what I plan to do is I'm just going to use this plate just as a load bearing surface. I'm going to attach this to the underside of the I-beam. So if you picture that the other way around and then I'm going to use a piece of pipe to go against this base. Now I may even add something else to this. I don't know but really the, it's not going to compress because it's the wood that is supporting the load. Then, what I want to do is I bought these. Those will go on the floor. Now the concern here is this may want to spread apart. So I will probably put a 4x4 inside of this so that the weight is on the 4x4 and not necessarily the legs of this. And then what this does is it gives me an adjustment so I can put tension on the pipe pushing up against the base plate and the I-beam and I'll put two of these on so I'll put one somewhere over in this space by the light and then the other one kind of over in the midsection there it has to carry across well just so it's on the beams themselves I know there's a you know the straps there in the center so at this point <laughs> that's the plan so let me get things put together and we'll take a look and see if it works okay I know I didn't show them on the floor but there is the I-beam and it's screwed to the bottom of the truss the second one is on the other side of this light so you can kinda of get an idea of what I was talking about maybe I probably should have filmed this down on the floor. Um, but what I did is basically went four feet uh, either side of center of the hoist pickup. And now what I want to do is I took, well, I took a measurement from the top of this washer sitting on the 4x4. Four four, and that's basically nine feet, nine inches to the bottom of the plate 
So now I need to cut two lengths of pipe and then weld them to the washers so that uh, I'll have my supports. And originally my idea was to use wood and actually have a hinge on that plate or that I-beam and then pivot it up out of the way. But with the lights and everything, I don't know that I could get away with it. So I decided to go with the pipe and then I can take it down and just get the pipe out of the way and be done with it. So let me show you what I'm going to use for pipe. So what I have is basically pipe that was used on top of a chain link fence. It was scrapped and I was at the scrap metal place one day and I said, hey, I could probably use that. And he said, well, just take some. So I, I have three pieces. So I'll take uh, the saw and cut off the length that I need. I might be able to get it all out of one, one length. I think these are over 20 feet long, or the two long ones are. And so that's what I'm going to use. So, this pipe is galvanized, I believe the washer is too. You really don't want to breathe the galvanized fumes if you're, if you're trying to weld it. So take a sanding disc and remove any of that material. So I decided to step this up a little bit. I've added a 2x4x8 by by strap that sits on top of both of the little I-beams. And I put in an I-bolt loop on the beam itself. The idea being that I can set the pipe around that and that'll keep it from moving around on its own. So now I just need to set these up on top of my bases and do some adjustments. Well, there you have it. You know, I've lifted with this hoist many times before without any real additional support. 
other than the straps that I had on top for the two uh, trusses. So now I've got strapping on the edge of the truss, I've got I-beams pushing up basically, and I feel much better about it. There's always a risk of something failing and you know it's, it's not worth it sometimes uh, to take that chance. And I feel like now I could be more confident with this whole setup and not have to worry about it so much when I'm hanging something you know from the hoist. So anyway, maybe that'll give you some ideas for what you may do or want to do in, in your shop. I make no guarantees. This is just my idea. But hey, if it works, it works. So anyway, I want to thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you would, leave a comment. Leave a thumbs up. And until next time, take care of yourselves. See ya.